welcome to my workshop on how to make armors. I'm going to explain like how you can create a full armor like from the start to the finish. So, my name is Matthias, but you can call me Matt. I am from Belgium, like a very small country in Europe. Um, I'm also a cosplay shop, .be representative. Um, I make armors and props, as you can see. And um, I'm an international cosplayer, so I like my job is cosplay. I go to conventions to teach people because I love teaching and I would love you guys to make something as well. And feel free to ask me any questions. Like if something isn't clear, just put your hand in the air and I will let you ask the question. So let's start with um, where do I get my materials? You're not forced to buy there, but yeah, I'm from there, so I promote them as well. Um, it's a cosplay shop. It's like a shop where you can buy materials, but it's more than that. It's like an atelier where you can work as well. Like It's a fully geeky place, so if you're ever in Belgium, you can go there. Okay, this slide, the giveaway, I had to move it because of delays, but I will talk about that later. Okay, so let's start. The table of contents. Um, I will explain the magic of foam. Some people might not have touched foam yet, and I will explain how to use it because foam is simple. Um, I will say in three easy steps how to do it. Um, I will also talk about the Dremel. The Dremel is a tool that is so useful for foam because some effects you want to do with paint, but when you use a Dremel, it looks so much better. Um, I will also give each one of you free foam clay so you can sculpt something. And I will also show how to actually paint your armor because I get a lot of questions like how do you get your gold so smooth and I will show how I do it. The laptop is stuck. <laughs> yes, it works again. Okay, so first of all, safety. Safety is one of the most important things. If you are going to use spray cans, don't ignore the using well ventilated area because that's literally what you will be going, what you will be doing. Like you will be tripping so hard. And it's, it's not a good thing, like, it's cheaper to buy a mouth mask or a respirator than buy a new pair of lungs. And I've seen some cosplayers who ended up in the hospital because they didn't read the instructions. Then, uh, paint, yeah. As you can see, please don't eat the paint. I had this one moment where I was like painting and I drink tea a lot and I put my brush of my paint in the wrong cup and I drank the water with paint. And it's not tasty. <laughs> and of course, safety glasses if you are going to use power, tr power tools, because accidents can happen any moment. And imagine if this guy didn't have safety glasses, he would lose his eye. So I'm not trying to scare people to, to work, but just always keep in mind safety, always. So first things first, foam. All my armors are made of foam because I love foam. I will explain why I love foam. So what is foam? It is cheap, um, it's very flexible and also strong. I will have an example for all of you guys that you can touch and stuff, but I'm waiting for my materials to arrive. Um, it's very lightweight as well, like, it's, it's like a feather, it doesn't weigh anything. Um, you will need exact patterns. What I mean with that is like, you can't just draw on your foam and cut it out. No, you need to have patterns in front. Um, there are different densities and you will feel it. There, we have like a, a gray foam and a black foam. And the gray foam is very dense and very strong. So if you will pull it, you kind of pull it apart with your hands. And you have the black one, which is a lower density and is less strong, but it's better for organic sculpture. Like if you want to make a skull, if you are going to make it a high density foam, it will be very hard to do. So, as I said, where can you get this stuff? You can get it in the cosplay shop, but you don't have to buy there. You can get it in an art store as well. 
or you can even get it at hardware stores. That's actually how I made my first costume by buying these yoga mats. Like I went to the Decathlon, it's a shop, and I just bought like ten of these yoga mats, and the cashier was like looking at what the fuck is he going to do? <laughs> and then I fucked up my costume, so I came back the next day to buy ten again. And yeah, it gets awkward very fast. So you also have special foam called LED foam, LED foam, and it's so good for special effects. Like the light shines through, but you need an airbrush or a sponge to paint. Like you can't just take a brush and paint on it because then light won't go through. As you can see on the image, when it lights up, you can actually see the full, full light to it. There's also insulation plates. It's like this thick kind of foam and you can carve in it with a knife and you can really easily sand it. It's a bit weaker and if you dent against something, it breaks. There's also expansion foam. That's a trick cosplayers used in the past a lot. Now, not that much anymore, but it's, it's still valuable. Like it's a spray and it sprays foam and it thickens over time. Or it's a two part component as well, where you mix two parts and it grows. Um, you also have padding foam. It's the foam that's in your chairs or in your mattresses and it's very soft. I use it for, to pad my armor because sometimes it's very uncomfortable to wear armor. But with this foam, it feels so good. Like You don't even feel like you are wearing armor. Okay, there's also foam dowels. Because if you want a round shape, just imagine sending a round shape. It's like almost impossible. And it takes so much time while you can just buy a doll for one euro or two euros. Um, for example, you can make a chain from it, like a really lightweight chain. I see a lot of people who draw like the shape of a chain on foam, cut it out and sand it, but that takes so much time. And especially companies like Blizzard or gaming costumes, they just love to have these sides everywhere. And you can just use doubles for it. like. You don't have to cut foam, spend all the time to cut your dowels. You can just buy them and glue them on. It's as easy as that. Um, there's also a bunch of other time-saving foam products because I like to spare time. Like, like it, it, making an armor takes a lot of time, so every minute you can win is like amazing. So there's like foam scales which you can make armor, scale armor of really easily. There's foam blocks. Foam blocks is the same as normal EVA foam, but like this thick. It's very good when you go on stage and you want like a prop that's durable. Like you can use cardboard, but if you need a prop that's very strong, you can just use that. Um, folks, foam spheres, spikes, and such like, they are just shapes you can already buy, so you don't need to waste time. And now you might think like, isn't it expensive to buy all these shapes, but it's like, what, 50 cents or something? Like, for the time you will win, it's, it's very nice. So, I'm talking about foam and I will give examples so you can touch it. But how do you use it now? Well, I have a system of three steps that return every time you use foam. And to use these three steps, you need a few tools. The tools you see in the, in the first side are the basic tools. Without these, you can't do anything with foam. The other tools are like power tools. They are a bit more expensive, but you will see from the moment you have them, your life becomes so much better. So step one, cutting your foam. First of all, I want to say the type of knife you use doesn't matter. Like some people will say you need an exacto blade, other people will say you need like this box cutter you can like go up. Um, it doesn't matter, as long as this is sharp enough. Because if you don't have a sharp knife, instead of cutting, you will be like carving, like this. And then you will have all kinds of lines, and that, that's just ugly. Um, so use a sharpener, like, you don't have to buy new blades, just use a sharpener, like in the kitchen maybe you have one. Um, never, never try to like do a cut in in two times, like if you cut, go for it through the whole way. 
And I would recommend like to go to the YouTube channel of Punished Fox, for example. They have like a shit ton of trips, tips for this. Okay, step two, which returns always again. It's gluing. I use contact glue. And contact glue is excellent for big surfaces. And what you do actually is like, you put glue on one side, then on the other side, you wait, and you can glue together. Um, but there's no room for mistakes. Because when you glue and you make a mistake, Okay, so we have the materials now. Um, yeah, there's also super glue and hot glue. You've already heard about these, but hot glue, for me, I have a bad experience with it because the seams will be not tight, and like if you go to a warm place, your hot glue can start melting again. And I've seen it with a few cosplays, and it's sad right before the moment you have to go on stage, the armor, like the plate, the seam just melted. And like it fell off, and that's, that's just horrible. And the third and last step, which you have to do, is heating. Heating is so important to get your shape right. Um, you do it best after the gluing. Some people will do it before gluing, but I like it after. Um, because the bond is stronger then. Because if you glue, the glue goes into the foam. But if you go with heat on top of it first, then the glue will stick, like not in the foam, but there will be a layer on top, and then it's, it's just a bit weaker. But sometimes, like, you cannot choose, and you have to heat first and then glue. And please don't use a hairdryer, or even an oven. I know cosplayers who put their foam in an oven and then shape it, or even worse, a microwave. There was this, I got an email from a guy who was saying like, yeah, my shapes are so weird, but I, I heat my whole foam. And I was like, how do you heat your foam? Like, we had a whole chat, and he said, oh, I put it in the microwave. Like, no, I don't, don't put foam in the microwave. And please don't skip this step. Uh, uh, I'm here in the Hungary, somebody's bring the hot water, the foam, and just like heat it. Yeah, hot water, I think it would work actually, because it's not dangerous, like you don't put foot, foot in your hot water or, mm. like I, it should work, but it's better to just buy a heat gun, it's like 15 euros, and like I still have my first heat gun from six years ago, so. So an example of the heat shaping, as you can see on the left, everything is like straight, just straight foam. After heat shaping, so you go over it with, with your heat gun, and then you shape it with your hand, and it will stay in that position. Like, as you can see on the bottom, it's the most visible. Like, you push it, like, in a, in a kind of corner, and it just stays like that. That's why EVA foam is so useful. You can even make a sphere from a straight, straight um, piece of foam. You just heat it and you press it into a mold or you press it on top of like these iron balls or some kind of shape. And it will just keep the shape forever, which is amazing. And like the picture you can see there, the, the armor is also just heat, f heat uh, foam. So um, you can even make very difficult like corners. Like they won't always look as pretty as this. But this is like an example of just of what you can do. And I also want to give you a trick. Like if you want to engrave something on your foam, you can use a, like a hot tool, like a wood burner or something. But I prefer actually like carving into it with my knife and then going over to the heat gun because then the lines, they will open up and you get like a very straight effect. Like at the, the one image you can see when you cut, you don't see the cuts. But when you heat it up, like they go open. And you have like a very pretty effect. You can also use like aluminium foil if you want to create leather with foam. You just heat your foam again and you press aluminium on top. 
and then you keep the effect. What I want to say with this is like, only with these three steps, even though you don't have a lot of experience, you can create a full armor. Like, it's not that hard to create it. It's not easy, but it's not as hard as most of the people think. I want to give an example of how I made the helmet of my Einstein cosplay. Um, you will see I work like step by step. I create first the color, then I create the part in front of the mouth, and then I just build up like layer per layer. Again, cutting, gluing, heating. Just repeating the steps. Well, of course, I, have, I had to do some work to get patterns right, that's normal, but it's step by step. You cannot just think, oh, this helmet, yeah, I will create it in one go, no problem. No, it's like building. Like you can, you can see it even better here. Like I built around the head until like the object is fully finished. On the last image, you can see the, the face itself. I 3D printed it because I didn't have time to make it out of foam. And it's also all about the details. Like foam on itself is pretty blunt. Like there's no detail in it. So a lot of people think, oh, I will paint the details on. But it's better to actually cut them out and glue them on. Um, I will give this foam around. There's like all kinds of foam inside. And I want you to like touch it and feel how the foam feels. And don't worry to break it. You can like try to rip it or anything. So yeah, again, oh, you have a question? Well, you are, but it, your life will be so much harder than with a mannequin. Like, and where can you work in like Biden? Oh, I just got mine like from um, a clothing store that like was didn't have money anymore, so they like sold everything. I got mine for like twenty euros or something, okay. or like secondhand stores have them as well. Um, so, like I said, it's a lot about details. If you look before the details, like. Some cosplayers do stop there. Like wh while I judge, I see it a lot. Like people stop at the first part, and then you can do so much more. Go for the second part as well. Don't stick to paint only. You need a good base before you start painting. And a quote I like to say is: "Armor has layers, and it makes you cry just like an onion." Because. You have you spend so much time just cutting our details. Uh, I wanted to ask, do you think it would be possible to make like your own mannequin based on your body that you would like, basically take your whole body with duct tape and then take it all and like, pull it with foam? Exactly, you you can definitely do that. It's okay. a lot of like people who make clothes actually do it like you take your full body in with duct tape, then you cut it out and you just step it. It's how I made my first mannequin as well. But the problem I had, when I wanted to heat shape something, so I warm up my foam and I press it, like when I press it against a duct mannequin, like I press into the mannequin, so I needed something hard. I might hear somewhere that uh, if, you know, there's a paper cut and if somebody can do it, it's more than easier to make the cut or form the foam. Yeah, that's true, like we live in a modern age, there are like 3D programs like Pepakura, who can ma make patterns for you, but patterning is like quite an interesting subject and it would take more than one hour to explain patterning. But you can use 3D programs like Pepakura and get a 3D model and get patterns from there. So I talked about the Dremel, it's like this magical tool and I like to call it like the best friend of foam. So what is a Dremel actually? It's like a rotating tool, like it spins very fast. And you can change the front part 
for, for any tool you want. Like you can sand with it, you can carve with it, you can cut with it, milling. I'm sure you, you have once heard about the Dremel. So first effect you can do with it is getting bevels, like really clean bevels. It's really easy, but there's something not a lot of people know because they go like this with the Dremel. And that's actually not what you're supposed to do. Like you can go from left to right, and then you like float on top of the surface. Like you won't remove a lot of material, but you will get such a smooth effect. It's, not, it's slow, of course, because you don't remove a lot of material. When you go from right to left, you will feel it, you will press into the foam. So you will remove a lot of material, but you will get like these little bumps. So what I always do is first I go from right to left, you get uh, the bulk removed, and then to the other side, so I get a really smooth effect. Also, drumming is so excellent for cleanup. And it's not only for foam, you can clean up warbler, you can clean up even wood, anything with it. Um, it's for edges, for seams, for bumps of dirt or glue, like if you glue something and you see, oh shit, there's like a ton of like rest of the glue, you can just ramble it up. But be careful to, again, to not carve into the foam, like slide it over. <coughs> then we have weathering, and weathering is pretty simple, it's just take your dremel and go to town. You want a realistic effect, of course, so you don't want to like, like do the same stripes, like, no, you want to just go random. Just make random weathering, make random indications. And of course, textures. Textures are so useful. Again, a lot of people rely on paint for this. But something, when you dremel it first, your effect will be so much better. Also, rivets, it's like a little trick. You just press your dremel in it and then you can heat it up even to open it more. And you will get, like, what, what I want to show with this slide is like a Dremel, you just have to be creative with it and you can basically make almost any effect you want. Like, you don't have to search too far to find a solution because the more complex you will make it, the harder the solution will be. And there's oftentimes like a much easier solution. So I told about carving, like this is a good example of the carving. It's a bit hard to see on the slides, but before the Dremel you can see all the, like, all the little bumps. That's when you, you carve from the one side to the other. And if you change directions with the Dremel, you can see like it's so much more smooth. Like the first part is with a knife, then with a Dremel at one direction, and then with the Dremel at the other direction. And as well, like if you get a Dremel and you get these sanding drums, it's a good tip to pre-wear them. It sounds really weird to like pre-wear something, but with foam, when you use a fresh one, you will have these little like, like a kind of dust like stuck to the foam. Whereas if you weather it first, this won't happen. So now I will explain a bit about foam clay. It's, it's a thing I use so much because it's, it's easy. And, uh, and I will give, give all of you like a little example where you can play around with it and you can create something like a skull or a kitty or something. So what is foam clay? I like to call foam clay the new gold for cosplayers because foam clay has so many uses and like before this existed, we had to find all the solutions and it was just a pain in the ass to find those solutions. Um, so foam clay dries like normal foam. You will feel it's like a bit sticky and it's like very malleable, but when it's dry, it's exactly the same as the grey foam you were touching, like, it's like magic. Uh, it works like normal clay, so it's just sculpting. It's perfect for details like a sculpt. Gap filling. If you glue something and you have like a big gap, you can use some like caulking or something or quick seal as it's called now. And you can fill it, but you can just use foam clay because then you can sand it as well. Um, it sticks without glue. So there's no need to, do, to use glue. You can just sculpt something 
press it onto your foam and it will stick to your foam, which is like amazing as well. Um, and it can be used in molds. Like if you have a mold, you can just press your foam clay in it and it will work. Now, even though it's a new plot for fast players, it's not like a gift from the gods. Because it cures so slow, so it's not something you can do like the evening before the convention, like, oh, let's make this, no, it won't work, because it needs 24 hours, but I will always say 48 hours to dry. Because uh, I know this girl who made a sword, and like the outside was completely dry, and then she went to the convention, and you can, could just see the sword doing like this. Because the inside wasn't dry. So don't just trust the outside, look at the inside as well. And it will crack when you don't cure it properly. Like if you put it in the fridge, it will crack. Um, and again, I talked about heating. Foam clay is not a big fan of heating. Like it can change its shape. So don't use too much heat on foam clay. You had a question? Yeah, I made whole head. And after one week, the chain was too tight, like for two centimeters. And it was like, like for first day after me inside. So when I was hiring some details, so it was like uh, really, really fresh inside. So yeah. more than one centimeter is like no no. Yeah, it's, it's like it depends, but indeed, like if you go too thick with it, it won't cure inside. That's what the girl had as well. But like indeed, a week is long already, but if you go like very, very thick, yes, then it can take a long long time to cure or it can even not cure at all so like don't try to do like a whole armor out of foam clay that won't work so and now i will give you all like a piece of foam clay and you can like make something of it like be creative so i will continue with the, with the powerpoint but you can still play around with it um the final part of Foam smithing is a painting, and I get this. This is the question I get the most: How do you get your gold so shiny? And actually, I it's simple. There's only one tip I have for this, and it works so well. And almost no one knows about it, so I really want to share it with everyone. Like I, like you see, I, I love shiny things, like the shiny gold and everything. The first step in painting is cleanup because when you do a metallic armor that is like not really that wetted, you really want to have a clean armor because if you don't do it, any imperfection will be times ten when it's painted. So that's you why you really want to fix everything first. So what did I use? You can use foam clay. You can use the quick seal or anything like that. Like it's. Just anything that works to clean up. Um, and always sand all the edges. Sometimes you might think, oh, my edges are smooth. I don't need to sand it, like I can just paint it, whatever. But then when you paint like gold over it or silver and it has to look pretty, suddenly you see all the edges and it's like, shit. So what do I mean with clean up? Again, it's maybe a bit hard to see it on the slide, but on the, on one side, you can see like um, there's like this line, and when you clean it up and you apply like a heat gun, a heat gun cleans up as well. Like when you go with a heat gun over your foam, it shrinks a little bit, so it becomes more smooth. Um, this thing is the enemy of any. Yeah. I've never used a steamer, but. Maybe it is possible, I don't know about that, but you have to watch out that you don't get it too hot because it, if it's too hot it will start to melt a bit and when you see fumes of foam they are very very toxic. Foam itself is not toxic but when you start melting it, it is. Um, that thing, that scares any armor maker. Like if you see these things just go over it with sandpaper, like it takes like two minutes and it's fixed. So clean it first, as you can see you have this big seam, very big seam, just put some quick seal over it, it's, it's, a, it's just as simple as that, just put some quick seal over it and this is the result, you have like a perfectly smooth surface, just by taking one minute of quick seal.
So what is my secret now? It's this thing. It's a spray gun. A spray gun is actually a big airbrush, a very big airbrush. And it's for me, it's my best purchase ever. Um, it's like basically like unlimited spray paint. Because you pour a liquid inside and then you just spray the liquid. Um, it leaves not a single brush mark because you don't need a brush. So it's perfectly smooth. Um, it gives a very even coat as well because when you spray and it dries, it tends to even out. Um, you can spray all kinds of liquids like flexible liquids, acrylic paints even, oil paints, anything you want. Um, the only problem is you need a compressor and not like a small compressor, uh, a really short compressor which can get pretty expensive. Like I think mine was like 70 euros or something. So that's the only downside, but I like to call it like an investment. You invest in it and you will see how much money you will save. Um, an example of uh, the effect of a spray gun is like the first, like the, the middle image, that's where I just spray. And this is only one layer, you only need one layer, nothing more. So like the, the color is so good, but only with one layer, whereas with, when you paint, normally you will need like one layer, two layers, three layers, depending on how good the uh, coverage is. Um, again, the shine of an even layer, like when you can get your layer even, the shine is so much better. Because if there's like a little bump, again you will see it. And that's why like sometimes when you spray some, some metallics, it depends on the brand of paint as well. But like you can see these little bumps and that's when you don't have an even layer. Or when you brush it down and you have this brush marks, like this, all these kind of lines on your crop. Um, also, I talked about one layer and some of you might know you have to prime your foam. Well, this one layer is sealing, priming and color in one, in one layer. What I use is like flex bond. It's like some kind of glue with latex mix. Um, and I add water with it, and I add a color with it. And the color can just be acrylics, like any any kind of paint you want, basically. Again, it's like non-toxic, the flex bones, it's really flexible, and so on. Um, and it also dries like in 30 minutes, which, which is very fast. So, I have a question for you. How much do you think the paint costed me for this whole armor? And how much time did it, do you think it made? Well, how much time did it take to paint the gold? Do you think? Anyone has a guess for the price? Twelve euros. Twelve euros. Someone more or less. Twelve is really cheap. Yeah. Fifty. Okay, and for the time, how long do you, do you think it took? One and a half hours. Three hours. It's a bit longer because I had to like, I had some problems with, because I painted this like in last year in February or something and it was really cold outside. But like, it was 30 euros for the paint. With like for this size, that's amazing. Like in the past I used to buy like spray paint, or oh, you know the plastic dip. For example, you can get like two cans of plastic dip with 30 euros only. Whereas if you use a spray gun for 30 euros, you paint your whole suit like that's that's just amazing for me i wasted so much money in the past to just buy paint um and it took two days for me to to paint it because it was normally it would be indeed like a few hours but it was freezing outside and as you know freezing outside is never good and my procrastination skills made me paint in the winter um and the last thing I want to tell you is how to repair your costume because when you have an armor and you travel with it you can be sure it will be damaged no matter what you do it will always be damaged and the most common damage is these wrinkles everyone who works with foam will recognize these wrinkles um, it's you can have it by wearing it you can have it by transporting it but it's so easy to, to fix you just take a heat gun go over it and bam, magic, all wrinkles disappear. It's actually because when you use a spray gun as well, like it doesn't work with like um, normal rattle cans, like when you use spray gun or like plastic or something, 
The wrinkles appear because the foam is wrinkling, not your paint. So when you go with a heat gun over it, the foam gets great again and your paint will follow. So that was my workshop. I hope you learned a few tips and you are excited to make something, to craft something. And I would like to thank you so much for your attention. Thank you.